Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the stage James Andrew Miller and Lucy Arnez. Good morning, everybody. Thank Hello. you for choosing to come in here this morning, nice and bright and early, the first one of the day, which I think is amazing. And all of you that chose to come because you're fans of Saturday Night Live, raise your hands if you are. Can you imagine? And you're up at this hour. <laughs> How I came, is that I came possible? Because I'm a fan of yours. So. Oh, thank you very much. Well, we have so much to talk about. I have so many questions that I want to ask Jim. Um, I read every word of this book. Every look at this book. I mean, it's it's huge. There's so much in it. If you haven't read it, pick it up. If you can, <laughs> if you can, pick it up uh, on the way out. Um, and so I have too many questions, and we only have 45 minutes. So I'm going to get right to it, and we'll see how much we can get through uh, in the uh, 45 minutes that we have. First of all, Jim, I just want to ask you, thank you for being here. Of course, my pleasure. And ask you, how did you originally, and I know this is an updated version, right? Right. This so was for the 40th anniversary of and SNL. And what was the original way that you dis discovered how to do this? I mean, were you in invested in all the interviews, or was it mostly looking back to other people who had done interviews and compiling them, or what? No, these are all original interviews for the book. That you both did? Mm-hmm. Tom Shales is the other author of the book. Wow. And we'd originally decided, thought about writing it, uh, just every single word is prose. And then one of the things that dawned on me, and I had to convince Tommy about this because um, he was rightfully skeptical, was using the oral history model and hearing directly from the people. You know, that's kind of a big decision to make. But I will tell you, I became convinced after several interviews that you could have Hemingway or Faulkner sit down at a keyboard and no one can capture the uniqueness of, you know, Dan Aykroyd or uh, uh, Billy Murray or any of these people. And luckily, we were able to get them all. Uh, and so I think that one of the reasons why um, fans of the show have, you know, been attracted to the book is because you really get to hear from them directly. We wanted to kind of get out of the way. I mean, obviously, there's a narrative, and we're trying to, you know, trace the pedigree of the history of the show, and we do write in between a lot of the quotes uh, just to give you a sense of the history of it. But I think it's so much fun to uh, to hear how each one of these people talk in their own ways and their own memories of things. And yeah, it's very stream of consciousness, too. It isn't like you say there are chapter headings and stuff, but they don't really go like that. I mean, when I was reading it, it just feels like you're at a gigantic party, like a like the party at the end, you know, like the 25th anniversary party or something, and all of these stars have come back, and they're just telling you things about the show over the years and telling you things about each other. And, and I mean, it's chronological, but... It is chronological. But at, 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 at the same time, I think we wanted to give this feeling of, yeah. like, Constantly surprising you. With yeah, and how did you, and it's just luck, I guess, that you got all of those people before we lost some of them too, right? Yes, yes, um, that was part of it, although I will say that um, Gilda Radner and John Belushi were already gone, and they're two of my favorite cast members. So, so their interviews SNL. and the quotes from them are from other places or other no. interviews? How'd you get those? No, they just, just other people talking about them. Oh, I was just going to say, <laughs> no, no, they came back especially <laughs> just, just for this. It was that important. Um, <laughs> what um, did you watch? Have to watch like all the shows too. Well, uh, you know, watched anyway. Well, I know, but didn't you go back to like, oh, now I really have oh, to yes. watch? Oh yes, I mean, went research. back and watched things over and over again. What a tough job! Sketches over and that over must again. Must be really rough for you. Yeah. Um, what do you think are the? I mean, I think Hollywood Reporter. What did they say about Lauren Michaels, the the creator of the show and the and the producer for forever, except for about five years? Uh, they called him comedy's most important man ever, Hollywood Reporter. What do you think were the special gifts that he had that allowed this show to become the show that's been on ever since? You know, it's a tricky thing because uh, so Saturday Night Live has been around for more than 40 years, and it's still relevant. We're still talking about it. Last year, its yeah. ratings were up 21%. Right. I mean, partly thanks to President Trump. Hello. Or candidate Trump, uh, the gift that keeps giving. But I would say that... Um, I would say that Lauren Michaels, at the end of the day, is the person that not only decides what gets on, but he's the person that has the final say in casting. Mm -hmm. And so one of the legacies of, of SNL dating back to the very beginning, you know, Chevy Chase was only on the se for one, one season. Right. And everybody thought, oh my gosh, how's this show going to survive without Chevy Chase? And all right. of a sudden, Lauren, F Billy Murray comes on, yeah. you know, and Phil Hartman leaves. And all of a sudden, there's this guy named Will Ferrell. 
and Kristen Wiggly's, and there's this woman named Kate, Kate McKinnon. I mean, it's really hard to do. But he's like, what do they say? You said at one point, I can't remember who said it. It's like a shark. Was it Ackroyd that said it's like a shark that's constantly looking for food? The, sh the show never stops trolling for talent, people who are really funny. I mean, there's always somebody out going to the Groundlings or going to the Second Cities or going to the comedy clubs and finding new young talent. And I don't think there's like a, a season when he says, okay, we're going to start looking for people. If somebody says, I found somebody great, he calls them up, he auditions them and makes them wait for how long before he'll speak to them? Right, so that's part of the torture <laughs> of auditioning for SNL because sometimes you don't, you know, you give your audition and you're waiting to hear and Oh, but just, they said they've been just waiting in his office for sometimes four and five hours. Yes, you, it, it is a world that requires patience. Yeah, but they could go on in the middle of the sh season. They could, oh, we found a person and, and they're hired and they're going on and they're yeah. writer. Oh, this is, I could get crazy, okay. So <laughs> why do you think, what do you think it was like the soil that uh, was able to fertilize a show like that in 1975 when mm -hmm. it first came out? Why, what was it like that made this thing possible? I think there were two things. One is Lauren wanted to get rid of the old comedy, like the old world of comedy. Um, Milton Berle was a uh, guest host uh, the first year, and he said to Lauren right before he went out, he said, listen, don't worry, I got the standing ovation all arranged for when I get out. And, he, and, and that kind of like canned laughter and, you know, all of a sudden it's like mock standing ovation. That's the kind of stuff that Lauren wanted to get rid of. Suffice it to say, Milton Berle, although he was great, only hosted once. <laughs> um, the second thing is <laughs> For that there's like a really cool thing about Saturday Night Live, which I've always admired. They're not pandering. They're not trying to figure out oh, what you like and then make a sketch for that. Mm -hmm. They decide that they're going to just do what they want to do. And if you like it, that's okay. And if you don't like it, then you don't laugh. And that that takes courage, especially when you're on television and you're trying to get ratings and everything else. And what happened with that was it turned out to be like a cool thing. People really liked their twist on it and their twisted minds and the way that those, I mean, if you look back on some of those early sketches, we had never seen anything like that. That's right. And, you know, John Belushi dressed up in a wig trying to be Beethoven, who's deaf, and somebody coming in and trying to talk to him and all he wants to do is cocaine. I mean, that, who is like thinking about that? Um, it's uh, just also the bravery, I think. You know, uh, Lauren, the, the network, you think about the bureaucracy of the networks are always, they think they're so smart and they're so not. And they said stuff to him like the first time they did the bees sketch right. and the network said, the bees gotta go. They're terrible, no more bees. And Which basically guaranteed that the bees would come back. The next week. <laughs> The next week, right, they right. came back on only in a little sketch where they walked out on the middle of something and the host had to say, no, 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 you're not funny, you've been cut. What? And then they walked off. So it became like a big deal and the bees were like famous. But there is an interesting story about, uh, did you guys ever see the samurai sketches yeah, of John sure. Belushi? They're just so great. And, uh, and so there was a decision, that was the first kind of like real reoccurring character. Should we do that again? And the, the concept of reoccurring characters was not really baked into the show from the beginning. And of course, Belushi was uh, thoroughly excited about that. And uh, so I think it was Samurai Deli. Samurai Deli. Samurai Deli, yeah. Uh, was the, uh, was well, the that's the big thing about the difference. They were just doing written sketches, right? I got a good idea for a sketch and sketch it. But then the networks and people would write in and they people like the sameness. They like catchphrases. They like, you know, characters they can come back and see again and again. So it kind of changed, didn't it, when they got stars like Chevy and those places. And they had characters that they created and then it wasn't so much about the sketches anymore per se. They were writing for those characters. <coughs> right, right, which is like Billy Murray and Gilda, uh, Todd and Lisa. I don't know if you any yes. of you, you know. And um, <laughs> that dynamic, and of course they wound up in a relationship because. Of course. Of course, because, you know, it's television. But yeah. uh, uh, I think that the idea of being in that sketch over and over again um, became very appealing. I had something I wanted you, would you feel comfortable actually reading something? Or, or I'll try my best. Should I, should I do it? Or would you well, you're. No, 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 but I just, I just thought that it was very interesting, this whole description that Lauren Michaels talks about the show. And I thought, see where the yellow part starts up there? Okay, uh, this is Lauren talking. Uh, there isn't anyone here who week after week doesn't build their case on how unfairly they've been treated. 
I think it's the most natural thing because they don't have power over their own lives. They submit a piece, and once they've reached some level of fame, the whole world is telling them how good they are. But around here, they're dealing with the fact that the writers didn't write anything for them that week. The fact that the writers got up in the morning thinking about themselves and not about them. <laughs> the fact that the writers sometimes look as if they have more to say about the things that they do. And the fact that a piece that they thought went very well in dress got cut. So I just want to explain that for one second. Yes. Every week at 10 o'clock, at 8 o'clock, um, there's a dress rehearsal. And there's more sketches done at the dress rehearsal than there will be at 11.30 for the live show. And what happens is Depending you on start, the audience to, it's, they you get start to feel like how well the actors did and how well the audience laughs and everything else. And everybody goes into Lauren's office and there's a bulletin board. And each sketch has an index card. And you watch as the index cards go on the bulletin board. I mean, some things are discussed, but basically a lot of people um, learn that during dress rehearsal, they the audience laughed and it's fantastic and they would call their parents or friends and say, oh yeah, it's going to be on, it was great address and then all of a sudden it doesn't make the board. Right. Like so a surgeon. Like said. Victoria Jackson was saying, like she would cry every week because she would think that, oh my gosh, I'm going to be on and that sketch that I loved all week is going to be uh -oh. great and it doesn't make it. But uh, he's got in incredible taste and, and you know, he knows what works and for his group and what doesn't. Well, and it's it also... can't all get on, it's too long. And it's also where in the show. The first time right. Wayne, Wayne's World was on, which was something that Mike Myers had wanted to do for several times before, it was on a 10 of 1, which doesn't suggest a big, strong of confidence. Yeah. It's not like it let right. off the show. Right. Do you want me to read yes, the last finish. paragraph? It's inter interesting what for most said. of us in the beginning, and I think it's true to this day, their office is nicer than their apartment. <laughs> and so just about everything in the way they live becomes an improvement once they get here. And then I think a lot of people come here, and it's their first job. And then within weeks, they have an agent, a manager, a publicist, a lawyer, a business manager, <laughs> and it validates they're actually in show business because they're talking to people about their career all the time. And after a while, there's not enough money to be made just by being here. There's more money to be made by the people who influence them. My job is to hold it together. I hate giving up people. I just do. At the same time, whenever we've gone through big change, it's always been kind of intoxicating. And it's kind of what makes the show. If I were still doing the show with the 70s group, I think we'd all just be fried. Right, yeah, for, for a variety of reasons. <laughs> uh, that's something I was going to talk about later, and, and we can, but the difference of what it was like for the stress of the success of the show and the stress of making that show, we haven't even really um, talked about it, but they, they come in on Monday, right? Right. And by Tuesday, uh, they have to go out Monday night with the host to some dinner, or is that Tuesday? That's Monday night. That's Monday night. And Tuesday, they have to write all these sketches. They're up all night long. They spend the entire, and they, meaning all the writers who are also all the performers, and basically live at uh, the 17, on the 17th floor. If you're ever at 30 Rock in New York City on a Wednesday morning, just take a walk through the concourse, because you'll see people coming down to Saturday Night Live offices, and they've been writing all night. All and night uh, sometimes they're not properly medicated, so you might <laughs> see them bumping into walls and stuff. But it's a lot of pressure because Wednesday afternoon right. is the big read-through. And that's where there's a table. I mean, it's a big table and everybody's around. And you have to read your stuff. And that is the moment when Lauren decides, OK, are we going to start making scenery? And are we going to start moving this thing forward during the week? Yeah. There's just a It's the first the cut, so to speak, right? And if the host is really great, like you got a Tom Hanks, you got somebody like that who's really going to throw, you know, all their energy and their great actorness at this sketch, he could sell a sketch. Like, oh, thank God, they really read my sketch and it, it flew, you know? Well Otherwise, somebody just will give it the half assed attempt because it's early and they're there and they don't care. Well, that's one of the interesting things about SNL, too, right? Because every week it kind of changes because the host yeah. changes. And right. there's two different 